Maybe I'm a little weird here, but a good dinner roll is the kind of thing I get pretty excited about. And these are some of the best you'll ever have. I used to make this recipe like once a year, like for Christmas or something like that, some holiday. And I don't know why it's not enough rolls for a year, but I've made some pretty big changes this year. One of them is making these rolls more often. It's April right now, and I've already made these three times, so we're looking pretty good. Okay, so let's make them. You're gonna start out with 225 grams of bread flour and three and a half grams of instant dry yeast. And I'm a strong proponent of using instant dry yeast or active dry yeast, which are the little packets you buy in the grocery store. Those you have to mix in warm water or milk or whatever and bloom them for a little while. Instant yeast, you can just add into your dry ingredients. No blooming, no waiting. You just mix and go. Okay, now we're gonna switch to our stand mixer bowl. And we'll start by adding 112 grams of room temperature milk. If you forgot to leave your milk out at room temp, don't worry about it. Uh, then a half of a beaten egg, which should be about between 22 and 25 grams. Uh, save the other half for an egg wash later on. Then we're gonna add 22 grams of sugar, five grams of salt, and then finally 22 grams of soft butter. Room temperature milk will help keep the butter soft, but again, if you forgot, don't worry about it. Although having the butter room temperature or soft is gonna help the dough mix and come together a lot easier. Now you're just gonna add those dry ingredients, the flour and the yeast into your wet mix. And then we will attach a dough hook on our mixer. And we're going to mix on low speed for about four minutes to start. By the end of four minutes, it should really be coming together pretty nicely. Um, and then after the four minutes, we're gonna increase our speed to medium. Um, and we're gonna mix for another three minutes. Uh, during this time, it should get pretty smooth. It should pull away from the bowl really easily as well. So after that, we're gonna check that our dough is, uh, the gluten is developed enough. So we're gonna stretch it between our fingers so that it becomes sort of transparent uh, before it starts to rip. That's called the window pane test, or it's the uh, improved gluten stage. Uh, that'll let us know that our dough is ready to go. If not, you can mix it a little bit longer um, until it gets to that nice stretchy consistency. So just plop that back into the mixing bowl, cover it, um, and then we're gonna leave that to bulk ferment for about an hour or till it's doubled in size. Uh, something I like to do, especially I'm doing a bunch of cooking projects all at once, when I am resting and rising dough, I'll cover it with plastic and then I will write the time that I started. This way, if I forget the timer, forget to set the timer, or the timer goes off and I don't remember what it's for, I can look back at my dough and I know how long it's been proofing for. So that's an hour. You've got a lot of time to do whatever you want. And uh, the only other prep you need to do is to butter an eight inch cast iron pan. You could also do this in like an eight inch cake pan or something like that. Even a eight inch square would work. They would just be a little bit of a different shape. Uh, so you're gonna take about a tablespoon of soft butter um, maybe a little bit less, but you see it's quite a bit um, and just rub it around your pan really well So everything is nice and coated This is gonna help the rolls so to not stick to your pan and all that butter is gonna soak in and give them a really nice crust Soft crust, but uh, a lot of good flavor Once your dough has doubled in size, you're gonna plop it out and we'll just uh, form it into a, a nice round ball just by folding it in on itself um, and then we're just going to cover that again. I just use the same mixing bowl again to cover it on the cutting board um, and just let it rest for 15 to 20 minutes. After that, your dough should be ready to portion. Um, so go ahead and weigh the whole thing and then divide that by seven so that you can portion it into seven equal pieces. My dough here weighed about 350 grams. So if I divide that by seven, each ball, each roll is going to be about 50 grams. Uh, so just go ahead and divide it into seven equal pieces. You don't have to be like crazy exact here, but if your pieces are more uniformly sized, they're gonna cook more evenly and they'll look um, more even in size when they're finished baking. All right, once you've got all your portions weighed out, you're gonna form these each into a tight little ball. Uh, so what you're gonna do is put each portion into the palm of your hand and make a claw around it. 
so that your fingertips are touching the cutting board or countertop and you're just gonna roll it roll it in a tight circle so that it's rolling around in that little cage that you made with your hand um, it's gonna tighten up and sort of seal up on the bottom um, this is gonna take a little bit of practice but uh, for a little bit of assurance after you do your roll if they're not really tight on the bottom just pinch the bottom together so that they hold together um, this is gonna help so that they keep their shape and they don't sort of explode everywhere when they're baking um, it's also going to keep the crumb more even inside while it's baking. As you roll them, you're just going to place them into your buttered pan, one in the middle and six around the sides for seven equal pieces. Uh, then we're just going to cover that again with our plastic wrap and let those double in size again, which should take around an hour again at room temperature, as long as it's relatively warm in your kitchen. Okay, here my rolls are doubled up. Uh, one way to check if they're proofed completely is to give them a gentle poke um, and the dough should indent but then spring back slowly. Okay, now you're just going to take your other half of the egg from before that's beaten and give your rolls a nice gentle brush. Um, after that you can sprinkle them with a little crunchy salt. Uh, use Maldon or Fleur de Sel, something like that. Um, if you don't have any fancy salt, you can skip that and they'll still be really good. Um, you could also sprinkle a teeny bit of kosher salt. Uh, it's just not gonna look quite as nice and it's not gonna give you that extra little bit of crunch, which is a nice texture to add to these rolls. And then you're just gonna go straight into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Um, if you have a convection oven, I dropped that down to 375 full convection um, and your time might be closer to 15 minutes. Now these rolls brown really, really nicely and they should be relatively dark when you pull them out. Uh, certainly not black, but pretty dark brown. Um, and if you're not sure if they're done inside, it's kind of tricky to check this kind of roll, but you can use an instant read thermometer. Um, and you're just looking for a temperature in the middle of the middle roll around 180 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you're gonna eat these right away, which you definitely should, um, I take another little, maybe a tablespoon or less of butter and just give it a nice little brush um, while they're still really hot. And then these little bad boys are ready to go. 